What are the links between autism, science, and your sex? This child might be able to help us answer this question. He has autism, which is a condition where people struggle to socialize. And he's male, and autism affects boys much more often than girls. It's about four males to every one female. But he's also fascinated by patterns. You can see here he's playing with water, and he's obsessed with the patterns that the tiny water droplets make as he blocks the flow of water with his hands. Scientists also love to discover patterns. So is there a link between autism and scientists? We're going to be looking at all the links in this special triangle, but let's start with the link between autism and your sex. This is Hans Asperger, and he's a paediatrician who was working in Austria in the 1940s and wrote one of the earliest accounts of people on the autistic spectrum. He suggested that people with autism might have an extreme of the male mind. So to know if he was correct, we first of all have to have a sense of what's meant by the male mind. One way to reveal the male and female mind is to observe children at play. Girls, on average, play longer with uh, dolls uh, than boys do, and um, they particularly imagine the thoughts and feelings of their do dolls. Boys, on average, uh, prefer to play with constructional toys like Lego uh, than girls do, and also mechanical toys like miniature cars. Children with autism take the male pattern of play to an extreme. This boy who has autism uh, is lining up his cars in a very precise sequence. He likes to make patterns. This picture is by a man called Peter Myers. He's an artist with autism, and he loves visual patterns. He's obsessed with the tiny details in his designs. And this is Derek Paravicini. He has both, uh, he's both blind and he has autism. And he loves musical patterns. He loves the repetition of a sequence of sounds. He can play any s song that he's heard after just hearing it once. And despite the fact that he has a, a mental age of a four-year-old, he can pick out all the notes in a 10-note ten chord, ten chord um, that he hears. Back to your sex, males on average show a, a stronger interest in patterns. But is this innate? We looked at newborn babies just 24 hours old and filmed them for how long they looked at a mechanical object or a human face. What we found was that boys, on average, uh, looked longer at the mechanical object than the human face. And girls, more girls, looked longer at the human face than the mechanical object. Given that this was happening at birth, it suggests that this sex difference might be partly innate. Karen Pierce at the University of California at San Diego found that if a child looks for more than 70% of the time at a geometric design rather than the human face, the probability that that child has autism is 100%. So this suggests that a child that shows the extreme of the male pattern of interests might also have autism. But where does the interest in patterns come from? We measured the hormone testosterone produced by the fetus in the womb. The hormone testosterone is produced in greater quantities in males, and prenatally, it shapes brain development. We then waited for the baby to be born and followed them up in childhood. And what we found was that the higher the child's prenatal testosterone, the stronger their interest in patterns, but also the more autistic traits they showed. People with autism 
and typical males are not the only people who love patterns, so do mathematicians. They love the beauty of patterns in numbers. These are the SAT maths test results from the US, and what you can see is that consistently, year by year, males on average are scoring higher on this maths test than females. At the 80th percentile on the SAT maths test, the sex ratio is equal. If you go up to the 90th percentile, there are 1.5 males for every female. And as we go up to the 99th percentile, there are two males for every one female. And you can take this all the way to the extreme of mathematical ability and look at the winners of the Fields Medal, which is the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in mathematics, where all 52 of the winners have been male since the medal was introduced some 80 years ago. Now, this could reflect social factors, but equally, it may suggest there's a link between your sex and interest in mathematical patterns. But does this extend to interest in science? I work at the University of Cambridge, and these are the statistics, the percentages of males and females studying the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And what you can see is that there are more males shown in blue than females shown in red in each of these STEM subjects. There are women in these subjects, but they're in a minority. Now look at these subjects, medicine, psychology, veterinary science. Here we can see that women, shown in red, outnumber men shown in blue. I think this is important because it's showing that males and females have equal scientific ability. It's just that women, on average, prefer to study science as, as applied to people and to animals rather than science as applied to the inanimate material world or the world of abstract patterns. This gives rise to uh, two predictions about the link between autism and science. First, if autism is an extreme of the typical male brain, and if males have a stronger interest in mathematics, then it could be that we'll find a higher rate of autism amongst mathematicians. And that's exactly what we found. Students in mathematics have a higher rate of autism compared to students in other subjects. Secondly, if people with autism have a strong interest in patterns, they might even be better at doing science. Again, that's what we found. Teenagers with Asperger's syndrome scored higher on this test of figuring out how a mechanical system works compared to typical teenagers. To be clear, it's not the case that all people with autism are talented scientists. It's just that as a group, on average, people with autism are scoring higher on tests of scientific aptitude. Back to Hans Asperger. <coughs> he also made a second very interesting observation. He said, for success in science, a dash of autism is essential. So he was also interested in this link between autism and science. Ian James suggested that these two talented physicists both had autism. Albert Einstein, who discovered relativity. Isaac Newton, who discovered gravity. Einstein, for example, was late to talk and said that he didn't like to socialize. Diagnosing historical figures can be unreliable, so we instead have been looking at living scientists and found that scientists as a group score higher on measures of autistic traits compared to non-scientists. So this is suggesting a link between scientific talent and autism. And this link seems to be genetic because fathers of children with autism are more likely to work in the field of engineering. And this gives rise to our last prediction. 
Is autism more common in places like Silicon Valley, where computer scientists and engineers live and have children? Silicon Valley is a long way away from here, so we went to a Silicon Valley closer to home. Eindhoven is the Silicon Valley of the Netherlands. 30% of the jobs in Eindhoven are in the IT sector, which is twice as high as other cities in Holland. What we found was that the rate of autism in Eindhoven was more than twice as high as in Haarlem or Utrecht, both cities that are not IT hubs. So again, this is suggesting a link between autism and scientific talent. We've explored all the sides of this triangle, but I want to end by telling you about Max Park. He's a 10-year-old boy with autism, and he's obsessed by patterns. He solved a 6 by 6 Rubik's Cube in under three minutes, and he's in the top 100 players in the world. People like Max are teaching us about the special relationship between autism, your sex, and science. Thank you.